Uh, there's something to watch and do other than armpits and buttholes. Not my heart. It's Pride Month. From small towns to big cities, mm -hmm. the LGBTQI plus community and their allies are celebrating being out, loud, and proud. Uh -huh. Today, we are going to take a look at the history of Pride and how people celebrate Pride all over the world. Let's go. Oh my God. Look at all those people. Wow, it's huge. It's a hell of a crowd. Yes. Get into it. Yes. I would like to be in a hotel on a balcony looking down at that with a bunch of friends. That's my kind of jam. I bet you there are some fine ass gentlemen down there. I know there is. Already found five. <laughs> Part of me is just reacting a little bit because we've been in the pandemic for a year so i'm like oh my god crowds imagine losing your friend at that pride oh god have you heard of this pride parade if i if i landed from some other planet and i didn't know anything about lgbtqrstuv it just looks like a whole bunch of folks having fun and, and, and maybe that's a real important message here. Brazil is a, is a very big country of dichotomy where we're so loud and vibrant and warm and loving. And there is a huge population, especially the younger generation who takes the gay and the queer community with open arms, but there is a huge traditionalism that comes with it and a religious thing that comes with it that is very much on the homophobia side of things. Amsterdam's pride is unique in that it floats. Their pride parade takes place on Amsterdam's famous canals. I can tell right away I like this one better. You look at all these old bitches, absolutely. Now that, I would do that pride. Oh, I would love this. Wow, a lot of pretty people here. Ooh, into the water. Is it sanitary? Oh, they have children. Oh, this is cute. Uh, there's something to watch and do other than armpits and buttholes. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, he was hot. How cool, I wanna do that. I yeah. wanna float down the river. That's so fun. That looks like a lot of fun. Oh, uh, that's cool. I love it. A blunt in one hand, my little champagne mimosa in the other, my girlies behind me on a boat, a yacht. Up next is the biggest little pride parade in the world. Reykjavik in Iceland hosts a pride parade that gathers about 80,000 people to its events. That's it? So this is a very small town, the parade's coming. Oh. Oh, the furries, come on furry representation in the trans flag colors. I don't get the same kind of level of excitement and as we did in Holland. Lots of little families, this is adorable. Like I would like to be on the floats, not in the crowds. I'm dancing. This is chair dancing. Because if I used my feet, you'd probably change the channel. The tractor. Super Mario ness! So I'm a gamer, so I appreciate the little Super Mario ness happening. It's like Lars and Niels got together and just built these things for them. Yes, Queens, you better eat it. Lady Gaga inspiration. Love to see it. Love to see it. But just see, look how happy people are. This also reminds me of that movie Eurovision. I'm dead. Well, honestly, it's it's really cool that they, they have this in their small town because my small town certainly does not have this. Yeah, did you know there was such a big gay scene in Iceland? Iceland is 300,000 people. So proportionately, 80,000 out of 300,000 might be the most proportionately largest pride event. I would love to be invited. If you're in charge of your small town pride, give me a call and I'd love to come. I like that they have that in their small town. It's important. It also just goes to show you like it's, you know, we're, we're everywhere, honey. We're everywhere, including Starkville, Mississippi. In 2018, the small town of Starkville, Mississippi gained national attention after city officials tried to block a pride parade from happening. Eventually, they gave in, and over 2,500 participants peaceably marched in the first parade the city has ever had. Here's a news clip from that. Okay. Oof. 
history today with the first ever gay pride parade. And supporters and a few vocal protesters lined the street. Many people in the Starkville community welcomed those who marched in the first gay pride parade. We're here. We're queer. This, we're going to keep going and keep on trekking forward. But Kevin Pulver says he isn't here for the party. He's got a message to send. We're here to tell people that if they'll turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and faith, not only will he forgive them, but he'll give them new heart and new desires. They don't have to be perverts. Kevin, they don't have to be slaves stop to talking. Sin. Adam Pittman is attending and I, participating mm. in the Pride Weekend festivities. He says it was a necessity he come out and see Starkville make history. I actually just came out to my family yesterday because of the parade and everything that's going on. Good, Adam. Good for you. The board of aldermen voted four to three against the parade, oh. then later reversed the decision. Yeah, and let's keep those so gays off our streets. In a city that allows him to openly express himself. It's really empowering because, especially you know, in Mississippi, we don't have the, um, a huge gay rights. You get really um, proud and excited Golly. because Mississippi hasn't really had a good track record with uh, gay rights, and um, we're going towards that. We're moving towards that in the future, and uh, it's very exciting. Good for Starkville. Good for Starkville. That that I saw. That's pride to me. I feel like of all of the pride parades that I watched, this is probably the most significant. Why so? Because the amount of opposition there was to it, people who were in that parade didn't just march to be proud, but they had to be brave. They had to be brave, and I'm so proud of them. Russian police detained as many as 30 gay rights activists who took part in an unsanctioned rally in St. Petersburg. A few dozen activists had gathered at Palace Square in defiance of a ban. Why do they care? ...down their request to hold a parade, so each participant demonstrated alone in a bid to avoid the protest being called a gathering. Homosexuality was considered a crime in Russia until 1993. What? And in 2013, Russia passed a law banning the spread of so-called gay propaganda. Wow. That's hard. That's tough. Not my heart. <laughs> what, you know, what, what kind of made you upset about that clip? Like, what, what tugged on your heartstrings? It's, it's just not fair at all, and nobody should dictate, you know, whether you can or cannot celebrate Pride. Like, they weren't doing anything. They're wearing in rainbow for God's sake and those disgusting uniforms grabbed them and threw them into a disgusting metal box it didn't even look color coordinated it was awful they're not doing anything and like I remember being in the closet and how much pain it was and how I felt like I had to lie to everyone and that I could never like I had a girlfriend that I loved a lot and I never got to they never met my parents because I was too scared. Watching a documentary that captures the first gay liberation march in New York City on June 28th, 1970. But I just rejected the mold, and when I rejected the mold, I was happier. Those first demonstrators left Greenwich Village. Block by block, the group grew larger, ultimately making it to Central Park. There had never been such a large group of LGBT people to leave the village and march across town all the way to um, Central Park, 50 blocks long, wow. um, to show visibility so cool. and that we were out loud and proud of who we were. In 1970, that was unusual. A lot for the LGBTQ community to celebrate. Activist and author Carla J was just 22 years old in 1970. She remembers the beginning of the movement like it was yesterday. I was 22 years old at the time of the Stonewall Uprising. We could not even hold hands in public. Did you know the, that was like the first pride technically? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's bravery, right? I mean, to be able to be the first people to walk out and say, that's it. We're tired of hiding in the, the closets and we're tired of having to be under a rock. I hope that people do recognize that this is a celebration of what those before us have done. Thank God for those folks who, who, who you know, set the stage for me to be me and you to be you and, you know, that sort of stuff. What does pride mean to you? Mm. I think 
pride means to me that regardless of who you are, you can live life as your authentic self. The basic essence of who everyone is is something that's very godlike. And, and I think that is our connection with God, with the universe, is through each other. Just, just saying, I'm not gonna hide anymore. I'm not going to be somebody that contradicts my true self just to make you feel more comfortable. I think pride to me is living your most true, most true and authentic life. We do have it better. And there's often that saying, it gets better, and it does. I'm so grateful that I've been gifted with this experience and this type of life, and I wouldn't want to change it at all. Back in the day, my younger self, before I came out, probably would have thought differently. But now that I'm you know, on the other side of the fence and I am prideful, I wouldn't want it any other way. Thanks for watching this episode of React. How are you planning on celebrating Pride this year? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to React for brand new episodes every single week.